little bit of ingredients to go through so um, let us jump into it we've got some bell peppers here yellow red green not too much maybe about a quarter of each of a medium-sized pepper I have about four cloves of garlic there some parsley and I love using stuff straight out of my garden it is the season speaking about parsley and out of the garden some fresh thyme out of the garden quarter of a medium-sized carrot just sliced up half of a large onion two scallions we'll need salt pimento berries or pimento seeds also known as allspice I have some light soy sauce there browning ketchup yeah just plain old tomato ketchup some smoky paprika and that's going to give it not only some color but that nice smoky flavor as well and in most cases and you all know I'm not a fan of it in most cases people use all-purpose seasoning all-purpose seasoning tends to be loaded in salt I am not a huge fan of it so instead I'm using some of my jerk dry rub um, just to mimic the flavors and stuff like that of that um, of that uh, all-purpose seasoning now keep in mind ladies and gentlemen there's still salt in here and there's still salt in the um, uh, soy sauce and that's light soy sauce I I'll also need some black pepper and as we go on I will we'll, you know I'll, I'll mention whatever else we add in my bowl here I've got four pounds of chicken the skin and most of the fat has been removed and it's a combination two pounds or so each of drumsticks and thighs with bone in typically when this is done in the Caribbean we break down an entire chicken so if you wanted to do it with an entire chicken you can certainly do that this is what I have and by using an entire chicken it will serve the cravings of people who like um, chicken breast or white meat yeah but now let's season this and the seasoning part is very simple we have all the and that's the key is to have everything prepped and ready I'm going in with a good dose of black pepper full list of ingredients will be listed down in the description down below I've got that jerk that dry jerk rub if you're using all-purpose well of course rock what you got I've got here the paprika and that's a smoky one notice all the colors already coming together there with that there I've got the pimento seeds or pimento berries or allspice toss that in there and the key here is for us to allow this to marinate overnight that is the light soy sauce and again we spoke about the salt thing earlier there so I'm not gonna go too heavy with the salt but I'm using sea salt later on we can adjust that if needs be the browning thick and dark just look at that mm. I'm just gonna pull all of that down now if you're looking for the traditional you know more the southern Caribbean does it that way the stew chicken this is a Jamaican brown stew we just call it stew chicken Barbados, Trinidad, Grenada, Antigua, St. Lucia, Dominica we do it a bit different so you will see differences but that recipe is on caribbeanpod.com I'm just gonna pull back the celery I mean the parsley for now I noticed we didn't use the um, the ketchup in there yet but we're gonna go in with the onion the carrots the scallions we're gonna toss that thyme in there all of the beautiful peppers and the garlic I just gave it a smash what I didn't show you guys below there I have three slices of ginger as well and it's just you can only imagine how lovely this is gonna be with all those banging flavors we got in there something is missing I know you guys already noticed the kick the heat the Caribbean sunshine I'm talking about a scotch bonnet pepper I've got a small one I just cut it in half tuck that in there you can leave it whole if you're worried about the raw heat uh, I know for a fact that this one is mild plus I like my food spicy yeah if you wanted to put some Caribbean green seasoning in there you can certainly do that but now it's just a matter of going in there I like doing things with my hands if you want to wear gloves because remember that browning and everything else in there potentially can stain up your fingers and your hands and everything else but we're just gonna give that a nice little mixy mix just work that in there kind of bruise all the um, the garlic and the the onions and everything else because the whole idea here is to pull out all those flavors and you know you can marinate this for a couple of hours best case scenario it would be overnight so you know hit my little cling wrap on the top there stick it in the fridge 
and let that happiness happen in the refrigerator. I've got a nice wide solid pan here, well pot on a medium flame and it may seem like a lot of oil at this point but later on we will drain out most of it. I've got three and a half tablespoons of olive oil. I like cooking with olive oil if olive oil is not your thing or maybe it's more affordable for using vegetable oil or corn oil or whatever else. You can certainly use what you like using or what you can what's affordable. Once your oil is hot, what you would do then is grab pieces of chicken that's already been marinated, shake off the marinade, reserve that marinade, yeah? We ain't trying to toss that out. That is gonna, yo, that's gonna join you in the festivities later. Try not to crowd the pan too much. But all we're trying to do here is sort of give the chicken pieces some color and to seal in those juices as well at the same time. So I'm just gonna go in with these pieces of chicken. This is why I have quite a bit of oil in the pan there. Um, just to allow me to accomplish that sort of browning kind of thing, yeah? All it needs is about 10 minutes in the pan here. I didn't have to fully cook the chicken, but to brown it and seal it off, as I said, and that is what we did here. And I kept flipping them from side to side kind of thing. So what I'm going to do now is take these out, and I have a plate on the side. I'm just going to put those onto the plate and go with the other batch of chicken because remember I said we're trying not to crowd the pan try to get much of the grease that that, um, that oil out of the pan as well so just taking out the, uh, the last batch out of the pot here a couple things we need to do let's well three things turn the heat down to low we don't want to burn that and that's a lot of flavor on the bottom there but as we spoke earl I spoke about earlier, there's quite a bit of oil there. So what I'm going to do, I have a bowl lined with a, a used paper towel. And all I'm going to do is um, tip the pot like so. I'm going to take some of that oil out. And we're just going to set that aside now. Ah, maybe a bit more. There's quite a bit in there. I want to reserve back about a tablespoon or so of oil. Once this cools in there, you toss it into the garbage. Do not pour that down your sink. We've talked about that before. Unlike other recipes you will see online, I'm, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to sort of saute the vegetables now. Normally they would put back the chicken in there and then the vegetables, but I want to pull out the flavor. onion, the garlic, the ginger, the peppers and everything and by having it in that bit of hot oil there that's just gonna do all kind of lovely things on the bottom there plus it's gonna help to deglaze the bottom of the pot that time, I can already smell that time in the same bowl where you marinated the chicken you want to put two cups of water in there and squish it around reserve that yeah but we're just going to cook that for about another minute and then we'll put back the chicken in there. Then it's just a matter of putting back, tucking in the pieces of chicken in between the sort of vegetables and herbs and everything else that we have here. And then that water that I asked you guys to reserve in the same pot, in the same bowl where we marinated the chicken, that's going to come in handy at this point as well too. And what I did was I tried to pick up some of the vegetables and all that and put it on top of the chicken just to make everything arrange nicely and all the juices that were left back on that plate, that's going in there. water that I ask you all to reserve so you're gonna have to crank up your heat to medium high as it starts coming up to a boil what I like doing at this point is a bit of tomato that's just one tomato that I cubed up and of course that tomato ketchup and then we're gonna give that another little mix we're gonna bring it up to a boil reduce it to a simmer and let it cook until that chicken is nice and tender and falling off the bones 
So I've got a rolling boil going on. I'm just gonna turn it down slightly so low, between low and medium, we're gonna keep it at that temperature. And this is where all that fun, all that excitement is happening in there, courtesy of the ginger, the pimento berries, the thyme. That's where all those flavors are gonna start pulling in and releasing now. Now you can cover the pot if you want, but I want to reduce that down, that liquid, to have a nice gravy and um, that tomato and the peppers and the onions and everything is gonna help contribute to that. All we want to do is ever so often, make sure we tuck the pieces of chicken down and let that do its thing for about 20 minutes or so and then boom, bam, you're enjoying one of the best Jamaican brown stew chicken you've ever had. It's been just over 22 minutes and the gravy is reducing down nicely and here's where you're gonna start personalizing things. You're going to taste it for salt and adjust it accordingly. The other thing is you need to decide how much gravy you want and reduce that down. But for now, this is fully cooked. It's just a matter of personalizing it now. I know my gravy is thin, but I also know that the pot will have a lot of residual heat. This is a cast iron glazed pot, so there will be a lot of residual heat. And all those nice, lovely vegetables are on the bottom there. What I will impress on you is before serving it or when serving it, make people aware that those pimento berries are in there. Finishing it off now, parsley. Yeah, and I know you're gonna say, hey, my mommy never did that. Well, here's what. Go ahead, pause the video, go and get mommy. Bring her into the room and say, mommy, how come you never do it like how Uncle Chris does do it? Because just, look at that, we eat with our eyes first. I'm finishing it off with that little herbal kick there at the end there with the parsley and the brightness of it. I'm telling you, man, there's real nice things there. <laughs> Sup, soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I'm mean, trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Hi, Hi, I apologize about that. Polly's in the kitchen with me and he decided he's gonna shake up things and shake up the camera and all kind of thing. But Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com, Jamaican brown stew chicken, Uncle Chris's version. Well, not too far from the original, but you know, people will still complain, especially coming from a Trinidadian. Oh, and there he is. Polly's making, <laughs> making his appearance. Although, have a great weekend, all right?